17. Uh, this is the first council meeting of the fall as we uh, wind down summer and get back to, I guess we were always serious. Uh, council met for 20 minutes in a closed session before, and so we're coming into the regular meeting. Um, council, are there any additional items? Starting with, I was going to start with staff, maybe? No? Nothing? Okay, council? Thank you, Worship. I just wanted to make an announcement regarding uh, the Big Brothers Big Sisters event coming up later this month. Thank you. Others? Councilor Lemon? Your Worship, uh, this is to do with the OPP costing. Thank you. Others? Seeing none. I've got a couple of uh, items, three items of events that have gone past that um, I'd like to cover off. Okay. Number four, disclosure of pecuniary interest and the general nature thereof. Seeing none. Number five, confirmation of minutes. Thank you, Your Worship. Uh, moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Drake, that minutes of the regular council meeting held August 21st, 2017, as printed be adopted. All in favor? That is carried. 5B. <coughs> I've got 5C here. Oh, it's got C in it. Okay. Uh, Move by myself, seconded by Councillor Gregg, that the minutes of the public meeting held August 21st, 2017, respecting zoning bylaw amendment number 25, as printed, be adopted. Thank you. All in favor? That is carried. And then number six is the resolution. Moved by myself, seconded by Councillor Gray, that City Council now go in the Committee of the Whole to consider public meetings, deputations, public question period, matters arising from correspondence, reports, matters tabled, motions for which notice was previously given, and other visits. Thank you. And all in favor? And that is carried. So we're now in Committee of the Whole. We have no public meetings, but tonight we have a couple, couple of deputations, which I'm uh, really looking forward to. I'm going to go down to the other microphone, and I'm going to uh, take Deputy Mayor Wright, so I'm going to leave the chair empty for a minute. Good evening, Council. Good evening, guests. This is a pretty special evening. The Right Honorable David Johnson, Governor General of Canada. You know, I should maybe take a step back. So, Hubble, if you want to come up and join us, come up. Sure, please. That might be an important step. <laughs> Where would you like me? You're perfect right there. Thank you. The right Honorable David Johnson, Governor General of Canada, has asked that I present the Sovereign's Medal for Volunteers on his behalf this evening. This award recognizes Canadians who have made a significant, sustained, and unpaid contribution to their community. It is my pleasure to present the Sovereign's Medal for Volunteers to Phyllis Jolly. Quoting the Governor General, volunteers are fundamental to the well-being of our country, reflecting the rich diversity of Canada's people and the many talents and interests which enrich our society and make our neighborhoods and our nation stronger. For 21 years, Phyllis has volunteered at the Grey Bruce Health Services and has been instrumental in their Story Hour program and Day Surgery Unit. She has a positive influence on new volunteers joining the hospital, goes out of her way to coordinate their uh, schedules and offer them experience-based advice. On behalf of the Governor General and the City of Owen Sound, Phyllis, we thank you. Oh. If you look that way towards the camera, I think it's... First of all, I'm presenting a medal, which is uh, very beautiful. Yes, it is. Beautiful certificate. Who told you you're going home with lots of loot? <laughs> Okay. And some other loot that goes with it. 
Thank Jump you. Forward. I think they're going to take more pictures. There we go. If you wish to speak, go ahead. Well, I wasn't planning on speaking. I'm really honored with this. And I, I should tell you, uh, a couple of months ago, I, Bud and I are never at home. And if you're a volunteer, you're out volunteering, so you're not at home. So I get this message on the phone, and uh, it was a woman, and she had a bit of an accent, and she said it was the Governor General's office calling, and she wanted me to call her back. Well, right away I said to Bud, I think this is a scam. <laughs> because the income tax scam had just happened before this, and I thought, no, the Governor General, why would he be calling me? So that's how this whole thing started. And then weeks later, I get another call from a gentleman, and I happened to be home. And I thought to myself, this is real, <laughs> this is real. Anyway, I'm honored, I'm honored, and I'm honored to accept this for all the volunteers. I go up to the hospital, and you know, there are people up there well in their 80s and 90s who have been volunteering for years. And it's just, it's just wonderful to be in that atmosphere of people that are giving their time uh, regardless of their age and you know and the, even the new ones coming in it's just wonderful I think that volunteering is um, such an essential part of our uh, our city of Owen Sound and the hospital is so fortunate to have so many volunteers up there thank you Council, uh, Deputy Mayor Wright, and I congratulate you and thank you again. Thanks. Now, we have one more pretty special deputation tonight from uh, Renee Schlonies. Community voices with regard to information relating to the Own Sound strategic plan. Now, I met with this group very early in the mandate uh, over at the library and was very impressed and asked them to come to council and explain what they do uh, themselves. And I think I've asked a couple of times, and I'm really glad they're finally here. So, welcome. Go ahead. I'm Tanya Butt, and this is Renee Shalonis, and we are from Community Voices. We are all living in our stories of our lives. Part of each person's story comes from the past, from where and how we live, from the people in our lives. This is who we are today, was decided by what we did yesterday. Who will be tomorrow is decided by what we do today. We are all creating our future stories right now. In 2009, Bridges Out of Poverty was recognized as a tool to talk with people in our community who are living in poverty. In January 2010, getting a head start in our community. From there, Community Voices and then Bridges Action Group was formed. Then getting ahead to staying ahead was established as a continued resource and support for getting ahead grads. To date, we have 27 getting ahead groups, 27 presentations through partnerships, and 16 workshops. In Getting Ahead, we examine what our life is like now. We research the realities of the conditions of our community. We explore the hidden rules for getting ahead. We investigate how to build resources and develop skills that give us confidence and learn ways to deal with change. We learn to build relationships based on mutual respect. We also learn that as individuals, we are not alone in the struggles and challenges we face every day. For some of us, getting ahead has been a life-changing experience. There are six communities that are doing Getting Ahead. There's Mayford, Owen Sound, Dundalk, Durham, and Hanover. The following quote is from a Getting Ahead grad. My life was directionless. Realizing where I want it to be in life was the first step, but not the final one. I discovered through this workshop it's, the only, it's only the beginning of my journey. The journey is different for everyone. Each person's journey is equal. The wait is the same for someone who needs dental work done as someone who is looking for employment.
From January 2010 to September 2017, there have been 27 Getting Ahead groups with over 200 graduates. The retention rate is 89% from participants who started the program to participants who have graduated. Community Voices in Action and Adversary Community of Bruce Gray Poverty Task Force. We all are Getting Ahead graduates. We are ex experts on life and what it's like in living in poverty. We examine issues in our community and address the barriers to help families create a better life for everyone. We are active at community tables and we are here to help you better understand the needs and under-resourced under individuals and families in our community. It is important that people living in poverty participate in solving community problems, not just their own. We are problem solvers with unique skills, talents, and knowledge. In 2009, Bridges Out of Poverty was introduced to Owen Sound. In 2010, Getting Ahead started in Owen Sound. We presented at Gray County Social Service Committee. We were invited to the TV program, The Agenda, Why Poverty. In 2013, Community Voices Bruce Gray Task Force was formed. We have done precarious work investigation. We invited MPP Bill Walker to discuss hydro issues. We invited MP Larry Miller to discuss new child tax benefits. We invited Mayor Ian Boddy to discuss rental property. We were consulted on payday loan policy revi revisions. We were invited to pre present at the Healthy Communities Conference. We were invited to the Adv Advocacy for Changes workshops. We participated in Random Act of Kindness Day. We were consulted on housing strategies surveys. We were invited for Rent Safe Provincial Committee. We were invited to take part in the YMC housing landlord slash tenant videos. We participated in Owen Sound City Survey. We interviewed all the candidates in the provincial election. We were consulted in the basic income pilot. We also invited Bruce County CAO Kelly Coulter to discuss getting ahead in Bruce County. Getting Ahead graduates have become Getting Ahead facilitators. We presented at BOP workshops, and with the support from the county, I have been hired to work at the Alpha Family Resource Center, and we were invited to the Food Bank Summit. <coughs> we contribute to the economy and quality of life in the city. We also invest in community by at actively volunteering in our community organizations. We often work part-time and therefore reduce the amount of social assistance we receive. We contribute to the municipal tax base by, as property taxes are included in our rent. We support local businesses by shopping locally. We participate in advocacy for equal inclusion in our city. Recent political and econo economic conditions have contributed to the decline of full-time jobs and the increase in poverty. 60% of people on low income are working. 20% of employees in Gray County have multiple jobs. 95% of all new jobs created in Owen Sound were part-time. Living wage for Owen Sound is $14.77 an hour. Rural Gray Bruce is $16.76 an hour. What my life is like a math story. A lone parent with two children. Monthly income, $2,575. Employment wage, $912 at 20 weeks, 20 hours a week for $1140. Social assistance, $1,663, which includes Ontario Works, Child Tax Credit, HST, and Trillium. Basic expenses, rent, $900. Food, $597. Utilities, $250. Clothing, $75. Child care, $400. Transportation, $125. Total expenses, $2,347. Actual social inclusion expenses. Tenants insurance, $25. Telephone, $60. Bank fees, $40. School activities, $35. Recreation, $83. Family outings, $50. Gifts for all celebrations, $50. Family vacations, $0. $343. or $2,575, take away $2,347, leaves $228. 
Actual monthly defect is $228, subtracting $343. So you're actually having a $412 clawback since you're on social assistance and you made too much. City of Owen Sound 2015 Strategic Plan. The City of Owen Sound will continue to support a variety of other important incentives being led by other organizations in our communities. Areas such as poverty reduction, health and well-being, and affordable housing are all areas where action is being led by the community, public health, or other community groups. We are all grateful to the city for acknowledging the actions that need to be taken, and we thank the city and the council for taking action in these areas. These themes are recognized as important parts of our quality of life in Owen Sound and as such the city is and will continue to support these actions through the city policies programs ongoing council support what can the city do the city can remember that people living in poverty experience high levels of stress trying to meet their basic needs the city can ensure that 211 has all the services and support workers who can assist in navigating the complex city system use Use plain language when providing information. Be patient and kind. Write out in steps, one, two, and three format. Be inspired at how people living in poverty can do far more with less. The city can provide prompt, accurate service. Transportation is too costly for people to come back another day. Recognize mental illnesses. El illness is a health issue. Validate efforts of people striving to live above the poverty line. Stay current on ad advocacy communities that reflect the concerns of affected citizens, regularly acknowledging the poverty affects us all. We are all entitled to city services. Acknowledge that people living in poverty can reach the city, understand the barriers. We care about our community. We are a welcoming, exclusive, and age-friendly city. We strive for positive change and are committed to continue working in a collaborative fashion towards the city's vision of where you want to live is where we want to live. We are the experts on what life is like living in poverty. We are here to help you better understand the needs of under-resourced individuals and families in our community. You need us. We need to work together. Community, invo community Voices invites each of you, your worship, counselors, and city staff, to participate in a Bridges Out of Poverty information session so that we are all building relationships based on mutual respect. Same environment, same expectations, different reality. Not everyone experiences life in the same way. We also like to invite you to the next Getting Ahead, Getting Ahead graduation on Thursday, December 7th at St. Andrew's Church from 12 to 2. That, uh, that date again, that went by kind of quickly. Sorry, Thursday, He's December 7th. We'll have to do a recap on the date. <laughs> okay, maybe changing it. There's, well, there's a little change. misunderstanding. Yeah. It'll be at the Harmony Center, not St. Andrews, all okay. on that date. So, so, so you'll let us know? December 7th from 2, 12, 12, 12 to 2 at, at the, the Harmony Center. Center. Okay. Thank you. Council, questions? Councilor Lemon. Well, I really understand the affordable housing issue. Uh, we currently have an additional 28 units under construction, Adawa Heights, um, and this is to meet one of the group's needs in our community, and that is a persons who are disabled. A number of these units are fully accessible. They'll even include a uh, sort of semi-garage for scooters. Uh, and uh, these will be uh, affordable units, uh, one and two bedroom. Uh, they are under construction and due to open, I think it's somewhere in January, which is not a great time to move, but uh, it certainly, uh, I understand your concern particularly about housing because I've been involved that, in that since I was first elected. and. Uh, 
when we started we had 40 units we now have 240 and uh, within the next two years we'll be approaching 300 but rent eats up a huge amount of income for some families and when we did our initial survey which is probably still valid today we had some people who were paying up to 70 percent of their income for accommodation and that's just simply not doable for children the other thing that uh, you mentioned there was uh, school costs and that's something i think the board of education should be addressing the principal of Ryerson and others who started our education system was that it should be accessible for all. But when you start wanting kids to pay, you know, 20 bucks here, 50 bucks there, some of them can't afford it, and it's unfair to them not to be able to fully participate in the education system. And I think that's one of the battles that needs to be fought. Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Wright. Thank you very much. First of all, I want to congratulate you on, on what you've gone through and what you're doing. I, I just think it's wonderful. And I really wanted to applaud you. And I will applaud you. But I want to tell you a success story for Bridges Out of Poverty. As a county councillor and as warden for two years, I was very involved in Bridges Out of Poverty and attended many of the graduations. And I remember one so vividly because it was a young man when he joined, Mary Jane was a teacher. I don't know if she's still there, up there, but Mary Jane was there, and, and she's, um, she's, she's, she's still, still around. Mary, are you here? Oh, Mary Jane, I hello, <laughs> hello. <laughs> and the young man that that didn't talk or didn't say very much, and at his graduation, got up and spoke. And then after he talked, Mary Jane came over and said to me, "He's never talked before." So I went out and spoke with him, and he said to me, I'm going to Georgian College. He said, I applied to go, and I'm going to take a chef program. We had a good talk. He invited me to his graduation, and he graduated, and I was so proud of him and of every. So there's many success stories that come out of Bridges Out of Poverty. It's, it's a wonderful program. It was started by the county, and it just it's just a fantastic place for people to go and, and get the support that they need and it builds such confidence so that you have the confidence in yourself to go out and do what you need to do. So congratulations. Thank and you. I, I yes. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Councillor Greg has a question there or a comment. Yeah, I do too. And I uh, absolutely uh, appreciate you coming and speaking tonight and, uh, and congratulate you on, on and the successes and so forth. Um, I have a couple questions. Um, the um, it actually, and I got, had the benefit, of, uh, I think it's 2015, of attending the graduation ceremony. And I met many people in the first three years of being a counselor, and that was one of the um, the afternoons that um, is is most vivid to me and, and and a very fond memory. So that too was that that was a good experience. The um, Moving forward in today's economy, I wish I could say that things are going to get better, but there is so much pressure on people in control and generating the utmost returns for companies. So it continues to be, you have to make 10%. Someone can't go in and say, I'll, make, I'll take 4% for a pension fund because it's the right thing to do and, and we can pay people better. That person will be fired because the next person in line will will generate that that 10 that 12 that 18 whatever it is needed and it's unfortunate but it's it keeps capitulating itself and it gets worse is the, has the program went into into high schools locally and spoke to students about the importance of getting an education in today's econ in in today's world like we were always preached that but it is just so darn important to get that education and not be left behind because it's it's not a particular people's fault but i wonder if that's something moving forward the program might consider or look at and the second question is in the last few years i know for years uh, particular particularly for single moms collecting support from ex-husbands has been a problem sorry 
has the government got better? Have things improved in that? I'm not a single mom, so I can't. Okay, I, I know that is a, a con big contributing changed. problem. The rule has changed as of January, no, February 2017, I believe, if you receive child tax credit, it cannot be taken off of your check. Sorry, or if you get child support, yeah, it will not be taken off your check. So so there is, it is improving in terms of getting those monies from ex-partners. No, it is not. No, no. it's not improving. No. So but there is still work to go. if you receive, then it's not clawed back from your Ontario Works. So. Yeah, okay. Yeah, thank you very much for your time tonight. Thank you. So on behalf of council and me personally, I'm really glad you came and that we uh, finally got you here. Uh, I certainly like what Community Voices is doing to be able to explain to people, including me that first time I was just blown away by the numbers that they didn't add up. And I didn't really understand that until I was able to go to your meeting and uh, see that. So we're really glad that you're here to explain it uh, from your own personal uh, experiences and, and sharing that story with us so now it seems to me somebody that first time I met told me that they wanted my job as mayor <laughs> I can't remember who it was <laughs> um, well <laughs> we will talk about that later Perfect. Um, but I want to invite Misty up to answer the first question okay please thank you hi I'm Misty Chenoir and I'm on Community Voices as well um, to answer your education question it is pushed on people, you know, people are encouraged to go to school, go to school, go to school. I did that as a single parent, two boys. I went to school. I did GED, did upgrading, uh, ace up at the college. I got a certified, uh, I'm a cert I was, was a certified um, welder for the dwelling course, graduated. That was two years ago. I had to go through the agency, get kind of precarious work here and there, and I'm currently a cashier, paying off my student debt. So Why? sometimes getting your education, Really matter. I'm still encouraging my children. Yes. I don't know why they won't hire me, but I one can, can assume. Why. They and don't want to put in a washroom for females. Huh. I applied everywhere in this area and couldn't even get an interview. So it wasn't a lack of my skill. It's, I couldn't get an interview. Anyway. I'm worried about sexual harassment. I just wanted to answer your question about education. Go ahead. And, one, and, one and, one and one it wasn't to be individual, but it, it, from a program standpoint does the program make that approach to schools to high schools um, just to con continue to reiterate it but yeah it wasn't speaking to an individual that's already graduated it's just speaking to those still in the in the high schools but thanks thank you again for your uh, presentation and, thank you. and we thank Ms. Jolly for her contribution to our community we thank community uh, voices for their contribution to our community thank you now this is probably a perfect time to escape if you don't want to wait for the rest of the meeting. You can wait for the whole meeting if you want, but if not... So, I'll just wait for a minute. <laughs> we're down to uh, number nine which is the public question period is there anyone that wishes to ask a question I see somebody coming forward I'll get you to push the button so the red light comes on there we go state your name and then ask the question hi I'm Larry McCartney my wife Brenda we live in 1915 26 feet east and uh, just one second my glass on here it's concerning the solar farm on 26th Street East. We'd like to know why we were not informed of the destruction of the beautiful lush property across from our home in Owen Sound. As taxpayers of Owen Sound, 41 years, we should have rights of natural justice information, which we feel a solar farm with a six foot fence with barbed wire in the top will devaluate our property. We've been led to believe this was started in 2014 by the city of Owen Sound and grasshopper uh, solar farms in which we were never notified until we seen a high hope pull up and start knocking trees down across from our property. Also we'd like to make an appointment 
I don't know, too far to discuss it with someone if it's possible. Okay, thank you. Now, did staff catch the question? I believe we did, Your Worship, and Mr. Becking's familiar with this file, so I'll let, I'll let uh, the Director of Operations answer it, Your Worship. Okay, thank you. Uh, Your Worship, the, um, the uh, Green Energy Act was passed by the government uh, back in the mid-2000s and gave uh, extraordinary powers to uh, companies to uh, initiate green energy initiatives. Um, under the FIT program, uh, companies were eligible to submit proposals, and uh, unfortunately, those uh, the way the act was set up, it precluded uh, municipalities having any ability to force the proponents to go through any kind of planning process. Very specifically, if you refer to section 62, bear with me. 62.0.2 of the Planning Act, it gives uh, performance the ability to uh, effectively be above and independent of any municipal planning review or, uh, or scrutiny. The onus under the Green Energy Act is placed on the proponent to do the uh, consultation. Um, and my understanding is that uh, the proponent in question uh, contacted uh, Mr. McCartney within the last couple of weeks, as I understand. Yes, it's after the yeah. clock was there. All the trees are knocked out. So uh, at this point, um, there is very little, if anything, that the city can do, uh, or for that matter, could do at any point in time. Um, the initiative, as I understand it, has been underway since uh, 2010 or thereabouts. Um, the city had a number of parcels of property which were vacant, and had no uh, need for in the foreseeable future. Uh, those were put forward uh, by the Council of the Day as uh, possible sites. Uh, proposals were received. Um, they can mean uh, a significant amount of uh, revenue for the city. Uh, most of the agreements, as I understand it, are 20-year agreements, and uh, they will generate something in excess of $700,000 over that period in terms of lease arrangements and other um, financial revenue that uh, will accrue to the city. So uh, at this stage of the game, um, the, the process is proceeding. Uh, we have uh, Grasshopper currently proceeding with their proposals that were granted by the city uh, in three locations, of which one is across from uh, Mr. McCartney's property. And, uh, I understand that those will be in operation before the end of the year. I'm sorry, why would you call I'm sorry? There's three plots in there? Yes, there's one behind the across the coast line, north of the coast line. And there's one uh, north of the uh, compost there, which is on an 85 acre property with nothing on it. And they picked a third one from my property. They tore down probably 15, 20 trees this size to, to, to clear this property. The 85 par acre parcel has nothing on it. It, has, it just happens like this here. Mm -hmm. Why does that matter? Who had that story? If I had been asked in 2010, I would have maybe suggested using the 85 acres that's available to them instead of something that's got a view of the lake. If I could, Your Worship, in answer to the question, the city went through a process to lease the property. It was an open process. Grasshopper was a successful bidder. The lease was for 20 years. Mr. McCartney doesn't like where they're going, but certainly the proponent of the lease they're a private business, they're doing it in the most economical way. I, I'm going to presume that the place, and I'm not a solar panel expert by any means, I'm presuming they're locating the solar panel close to where they can access the grid. And that's certainly a private mm -hmm. decision for a company that has gone through the process, approved by council <coughs> today, to lease this land and generate revenue for the rate payer. I have sp spoke to a both Mr. and Mrs. McCartney, I'm going to say three times, and, and yeah. clearly they don't like the process, but the process is the process. We followed it, so had Grasshopper. The outcome, you know, they don't like it, certainly was was open. Um, I saw, sorry, open to who? It was an open process, Mr. McCartney. We were never there. informed for uh, 2010. We were never informed. Your gra uh, grass said, we personally delivered a letter for it. They did not show up. They may have given it to my snowman, but they didn't give it to us. Right. And you said, well, they did, but they didn't. I, I did not say they did. I, I said they told me that they had Well, they told you that. Okay. That's correct. 
I, I that also that brought that information out that very same day, Mr. Carpenter, and dropped it at your house. Yeah. So I, I certainly the city's done everything they can. Right. Again, we understand you don't like the outcome. Well, I don't like how it's handled. That we were never informed as taxpayers. We were never informed. Isn't there a right as a taxpayer? As Mr. Beckman has said, under the Green Energy Act, all is that the process is informed. That's correct. Fair, that's fair. Uh, well, well, I can't say whether it's fair enough. So, 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 so really Mr. Mr. Ritchie, this question. is a little bit like the uh, big turbines that are going up in farmland. That there is no consult. Well, there's some consultation, but. Uh, municipality has no authority over it, can't control it with uh, with any bylaws, with any planning rules, that it's it's pretty well the same thing with these solar panels as the wind turbines then. So That's you say correct. you have city's no control? Once we've made the option, Your Worship, that we wanted to lease the property, all those properties were discussed with staff, brought forward to Council of the Day, that they were not uh, of immediate use to the ratepayers. As Mr. Beckman said, I believe we'll be generating roughly $700,000 on behalf of the ratepayer in the next 20 years from these properties. In 20 years, those will be removed and they'll be back in circulation should the city need it. Uh, and it, again, anything the city <coughs> does, you have people who may not like it in their in their area. I can tell you it will meet the building code. The fence is six feet high. These particular panels, I believe, are eight feet high. And many structures in this town built right next to all of us are, are greater than eight feet high. So I, I, I really believe Time will tell that it will not be that big an influence. If it does affect your property values, certainly MPAC will look at that. You will, will you? MPAC will. And that's uh, correct. So the value of my property, how many solar farms have been in North South in this area in the last 10 years? In many solar farms in Ontario. In this area? In many solar farms in Ontario. Owns out. You said a house going up is to disrupt your Your Worship, again, I think I've answered your question, yeah. Mr. McCartney. I really not much more I can tell him this evening. I have spoken to him. One question like to him. you, though, sir. You said that the, your solar took the most uh, economical way for the power. The power goes right down that line of 85 acres, across the rail line into the other property. So How could that be? So I think of Mr. McCartney at that point, it's not within the city's mandate or ability to tell them where they go. They've leased those properties and then they choose where they go and under the, uh, is explained under the, uh, the Green Energy Act, they get to choose that. We don't get to influence it. Is that right though? Like why would you, why would it be allowed? Uh, you'd have to really have take to that up with a member of a provincial parliament because it's provincial parliament rules. I, I get your point, but it's out of our hands and out of our ability to, uh, to act on it. You almost have to understand where they went though. That uh, compost there has 85 acres of nothing. Yeah. And you know, if they'd ask me, I'd say, well, think about it, guys. And, you, and you know, I'd actually ask them to take a drive down and have a look at where they're putting it. But I realized, like, how can they have that kind of control of what they do in the city? It, it's under the Provincial Act. That's unfortunate. Yes. I feel very uh, disappointed for the city. I've been a taxpayer for many years. I've worked with many people in this area. And I feel like you guys forgot about us. Again, yeah, but you're saying it's this. Uh, okay, I'm, you know, you know what? I, we're going to have to move on with the meeting. That's I can't fine, really yeah. argue. I, uh, you've answered your question. I appreciate your your emotion about it. I got that. But yeah. If I get legal advice, I can come back and talk to someone. Who would I do that? Who would I appoint that to? Um, I guess right to Mr. Ritchie. But I, again, there's nothing within the city's power that we can do anything. So the devaluing so. our property has nothing to do with anybody. Sorry. The, the devalue of our property. Uh, yeah. yeah. Don't know even how to answer that. So, yeah. well, uh, okay, I'll talk to Mr. Dahl. Get legal advice. Thanks for your time. Thank you. Now, number ten in our agenda is correspondence received for which direction of council is required. At uh, ten A, there is a letter from the Owen Sound Downtown Improvement Area, Rodney Rogers. Um, do you have that? So, someone maybe want to uh, review it for us, and then we can. Decide what we need to do with it. Uh, Your Worship, uh, the letter is from the DIA uh, requesting that the city take action with respect to um, the accumulation of garbage bags on uh, city, the main st city streets um, and, um, and uh, asking that we enforce the bylaws. Um, the matter has come forward to the operations committee uh, staff were directed to come forward with a comprehensive report outlining the full range of uh, measures that could be taken to address the concern 
that will come forward to the committee in September, and uh, then uh, any direction from the committee will come forward to council for ratification, uh, presumably at its first meeting in October. Okay. Thank you. Questions? Councillor Lemon? Well, I was at the meeting where this was discussed, and it's an increasing problem with people uh, coming down from upstairs apartments and just depositing their garbage on the main street on 1st Avenue West, 3rd Avenue West, 8th Street, 9th Street. Uh, I assume 10th Street as well. I haven't seen any there, but it is very frustrating uh, for the BIA trying to keep the downtown looking really attractive, and when there's garbage and uh, recyclables without not even close to the time when they're going to be collected. And this is what the issue is. Uh, people putting it out three days before Friday night and the collection is next week. And that's really not acceptable. Thank you. Yeah, I, I th think we've kind of reached a uh, point that we need to have that hard look. Uh, in the past, and all the building owners downtown were probably owned by the store owner and they could remove tenants upstairs at will, but when some of the uh, landlords aren't around, it, it's back alleys, it's all over the places. We work hard to try and attract, uh, renew downtown, try and attract businesses to downtown, and then there's garbage piled up in the back alley. It's uh, next to impossible for bylaw enforcement officers to be there at the right moment when these people are putting their bags out in the middle of the night and catching them, and it's, it's frustrating for everybody, and it'd be nice to find a way to deal with it, so. We look forward to the report. With regard to the correspondence received, um, should we send that maybe to the committee? I would make a motion to refer that to the operations team. Okay. All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Number 11A is report from City Clerk with regard to appointment of bylaw enforcement officer. Yes, through your worship. Due to the hiring of a new bylaw enforcement officer and staffing changes at Heritage Place Mall, staff are requesting that City Council pass a motion to amend the appointed officer's bylaw. Thank you. Councillor Thomas? It moves that recommendation. Any discussion? All in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Number two, report from purchasing agent with regard to lot expansion at Julie MacArthur Rec Center. Mr. Backing? Your Worship, um, tenders uh, were called in accordance with city policy for the hard surfacing and associated works of uh, expansion of the north parking lot at the rec center. Um, as many of you will know, we've been saving up uh, both ourselves and our partners, the YMCA, have been saving up the past five years to, uh, to make this project uh, come to fruition. Uh, in order to make up for the 70 parking spots that we were short at the time that the MacArthur Center was constructed. Um, the bids, two bids were received, one from E.C. King and the other from Harold Sutherland, both of which are well in excess of the available budget. An analysis of the, uh, of the two bids indicates that uh, many of the unit costs for items of work are well in excess of what we would consider to be normal and it's our collective view that these uh, the reason for the elevated pricing is that the contractors in the area are so busy with other items of work that there they would have difficulty or extreme difficulty trying to accommodate it this late in the year within their their uh, workflow program for the, the balance of the year um, and we feel that by tendering at a more um, a more appropriate time uh, typically in the late winter or early spring we'll likely get uh, better pricing so the staff recommendation is that the contract not be awarded by council and that um, the funds be approved and carried forward into the 2018 uh, capital budget and uh, we'll retender next spring or late, late winter um, and see where, where we end up and then we go from there. Thank you. Deputy Mayor Wright. Thank you very much. And I, I wholeheartedly agree from what we are having done, those prices are 
are way out of line. So I will make the recommendation that we not award the contract at this time and we retender at a different time and that the, 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 the money that's been in the budget be moved forward to the 2018 budget. Thank you. Discussion? Going this way, Councillor O'Leary. Through your worship to Mr. Becking, I just, when I read through this whole thing, kind of brought me back to our budget meetings, our budget meetings when we hired another engineer. And I see these engineering fees at 65, 66,530. Is this one of the projects that we could be doing in, in house or how is all that going? How does it, how does it work in terms of the number of projects that we do in house? I would suggest your worship that um, this is not one of those projects where it could be done in-house. There is a significant landscape component to the, the project and um, really we need some outside expertise on, on the, uh, this particular item. As it relates to the broader question asked by the, the councillor, um, things are proceeding extremely well. Um, uh, Mr. Paquette, who was the individual who was retained, has looked after uh, quite a number of projects, uh, both in terms of uh, water, wastewater, uh, road reconstruction projects, where we are doing uh, work at, at a significantly reduced rate in order to keep our engineering costs down. Mm -hmm. okay. Yeah, no, thank you. Thank you. I need to call the question, don't I? Call the question, all in favor? That is carried. Thanks. So I think number three under 11A is report from the Manager of Community Development and Marketing with regard to a concert being hosted by the attack. So Thank you, Worship. Uh, the attack are partnering with Don Jones Productions um, to bring Dallas Smith to the Bayshore Community Center on October 16th. Um, council is asked to consider an agreement with the attack for the event. Um, as per the city's agreement with the attack, this is considered one of their no-charge rentals here at the Bayshore. The city will receive, however, 2.5% of the t ticket surcharge, and also the attack will pay um, all of the conversion costs in the facility. The agreement provides for things like liability insurance, a damage deposit, um, the conversion costs, as well as compliance with the city's municipal alcohol policy, which will include um, the use of paid duty officers for the event. So the recommendation is that council would approve the licensed event on Monday, October 16th from 6 till 10 and authorize a bylaw to execute the agreement with the attack for the event. Okay. Go ahead, Councillor Dodd. Thank you, Worship. I'd be more than happy to move this recommendation. It's uh, always good to see that we're bringing in some new concerts here that I know are, are actually a very popular hit for our, everyone in our community. So I'd be more than happy to move that recommendation. Further discussion? Seeing none, all in favor? That's carried. Thanks. Number four is a uh, verbal oral report from Deputy Mayor Wright. Great Thank county. you very much. I, I don't really have a report. I just want to uh, remind Council that the um, county is undergoing a new um, uh, planning document, a 10-year planning document, and uh, this public meeting will be here at the Bay Shore on Tuesday the 19th of September. I believe it starts around 6.30. Now, I just would like to ask yep, yep. you, please, uh, if we do, are we making a presentation on behalf of the city at this time? Through you, Your Worship, we don't have a presentation plan, but staff will certainly be planning to attend and gathering information and reporting back to the committee. There, okay, thank you for that. Uh, we all already, there has been one presentation made about um, development in unserviced areas, and it was specifically mentioned Owen Sound and our neighbors to our to both our sides and I just think that you know I mean we often often when there's uh, development going on outside our lines we often uh, question it or raise questions about it of concern this is the place where we should go and raise those concerns and if we want to make any changes in that county plan then we should be prepared to stand up at that public meeting and say we are not happy with with development that's going on in unserviced areas close to our, our city and um, and let the county deal with that and let them know and add our voice to those other voices that have talked about uh, the unhappiness about development on unserviced land. Good. Thank you. We're down to 11B is the consent agenda items. 
opportunity, Your Worship, on the consent agenda this evening is a report respecting the use of Harrison Park for the Boy Scouts 55th Annual Sunset Area Winter Camp. There are minutes for receipt from the Tom Thompson Art Gallery Board of Management. And the following businesses receive final approval. Lay Squad at 817 2nd Ave East. Taylor Electronic Services has relocated to 2075 16th Avenue East. Tip Top Taylors at the Mall has had a change of ownership, as has Grey Bruce Dog Care at 1035 3rd Ave East. Lastly, there is correspondence received, which is presented for the information of Council. The full listing is available at 11 4. Good, thank you. I can't remember. Does Council Lemon have something for the consent? Yeah. 11B? 1? Be on your sheet there. Don't have to stand. Thank you. So, motion made. Any discussion? Questions? All in favor? That is carried. Uh, I'm going to come back. Number two is uh, minutes of boards and committees from the Tom Thompson Art Hour two meetings. Yeah, thanks, Thompson. Your Worship. Uh, not too much to report on these meetings because Council has been updated uh, on most of what's gone on. Uh, the uh, business of the gallery board continues to be focused on uh, incorporating the gallery, gallery putting all of the uh, proper uh, procedures in place uh, for that to happen, uh, transitioning from the uh, city's financial system to a new separate financial system for the gallery, and, uh, and of course mentioned in there was the uh, step away from the courthouse. Uh, on the July 25th min minutes, I just want to note, uh, thanks Councillor McManaman, that uh, there is no attendance uh, at the top of the uh, sheet, so if we could amend those minutes, I guess we passed them already, but I can provide the names to the clerk of who was at the meeting, so those can be added in uh, afterwards. Uh, and again, that meeting, uh, much of the meeting again was focused on, uh, on moving things forward. Uh, there was some discussion, the search is on again now for uh, locations for a potential new build uh, and they continue to work with a uh, fundraising uh, uh, organization to uh, get their capital campaign in order. Good, thanks. Thank you. Any questions? Go ahead. Thanks, Mervai. I do have a couple questions um, and I'm kind of just going to fly through both of them. I'm not sure where exactly what month it was, but um, early on in the first set of minutes there was some reference to being over budget already this year and alongside that looking to add employees yet um, and that causes me a little bit of concern um, they came in a little over budget last year and, and uh, utilized the last of their reserves they also last June spoke to council saying that we could inherit the rice house and we will do it and we will be on budget and and they did not and further in the the minutes then there's a reference to needing more funds for the operating costs for the race house as well and general overhead uh, that's uh, one question and concern my second one is I think the new board members a, a terrific addition but I wondered what is or how transparent what was their process to electing a new member um, how did they advertise the that in the public starting with your first question uh, we at the as you'll see in the minutes that come forward uh, next month uh, the gallery has uh, created a new variance report which will come quarterly uh, part of the issue with budgeting at the gallery as I understand it is that because so much of what they do is dependent on grants uh, and the grants tend to come in at various different times during the year so at certain times of the year prior to grants arriving they will in fact appear to be over budget but once the grants come in things come back online and and uh, you know they, they they come back to rights uh, it's again you know part of operating in the uh, public domain and i know that uh, certainly once uh, incorporation is granted there'll be other sources of funding available to the gallery that will hopefully help to uh, smooth out some of those bumps in terms of uh, funding 
The gallery is short stocked presently. They've had uh, they've had a few people depart, and so when they refer to hiring more staff, that's what the reference is to. They've been uh, short staffed by about five people, is my understanding, and uh, they're looking to replace some of those people as quickly as possible. Uh, in terms of the uh, board uh, nominations, basically they nominate from board members, so board members will put forward names for nomination. There's an interview process that uh, goes through and uh, I'll have to ask, I don't think there was a public advertisement, but I would have to check on that for sure to find out. But they typically have had their own, over the years I think, their own nominating process over there. We have uh, one councillor and one person appointed by council on that board and otherwise everyone there is appointed uh, over there. So. Does that answer your question? Yes. Yep. Good. Thank you. Uh, what's next? 11C, minutes of boards and committees for approval, starting off with Accessibility Advisory Committee, meeting held August 28th, 2017. Councillor McManaman. Thank you. <clears throat> Thank you, Worship. Um, uh, a few items on this uh, agenda we discussed. Uh, staff were looking at a, a bench for uh, for people with mobility issues uh, at the professional center where our offices are now uh, at the life labs location that uh, was looked into there is one uh, there and they're going to uh, talk about moving it to a, a better location um, the people have seen the tactile walking surface indicators on our sidewalks they're those either yellow or red uh, surfaces at corners at intersections for new sidewalks uh, that's for people with uh, visibility uh, uh, sight issues sorry um, so they know where the sidewalk ends and the road starts before they walk out into traffic uh, it's the new standard that they must be included on any new sidewalks uh, there is some uh, leeway as to what one you put in place the committee here is recommending the uh, the red um, cast iron ones uh, they have a uh, beveled surface, would that be the right word? Uh, and the red is a contrasting color, so people with uh, uh, issues can, can make out the, uh, that plate in the <coughs> sidewalk. So anyway, the recommendation here from the committee, we did have one of our members uh, 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 look into them and has some experience in that uh, department, and that was, uh, that's the recommendation that, we, that the new city standard be the cast iron material and the and be red in color um, <clears throat> the uh, situation uh, was raised by a letter to the committee about uh, the intersection of 10th street east and 4th avenue east uh, interesting until an issue is raised i go through that intersection a dozen times a day and did not notice this problem but when it was pointed out it clearly is a problem that the way the intersection uh, somebody with sight issues is led right out into the intersection not into the crosswalk I think it's the northeast corner. No, sorry, southwest corner. Southwest corner. Uh, anyway, that uh, that's going to be fixed during our uh, concrete program in the spring or uh, in the fall of this year. Uh, we were going to have a discussion at committee about that. Is that still moving forward? There was going to be a meeting to discuss this issue. It, it will be moving forward, Your Worship. Yes. Okay. Thank you. Um, uh, just another small item. A, uh, there's a new project called the Stop Gap ramp project it's for buildings particularly in the downtown that have uh, um, small rises to get into their business so if somebody in a wheelchair or a mobility device couldn't enter their business so just a quick count there's perhaps a dozen businesses downtown that have that, that lip or step um, this uh, this project i think came out of toronto and it's a ramp a wooden ramp not permanent it's placed out when somebody requests it uh, the store owner store, store owner has it um, anyway, it's an interesting idea. Um, all the material and labor is donated. It's not a city project. It's a it's a um, community project, I guess you call it. The, co the committee uh, uh, supports the striking of a working group to look into this project and, and move it forward. Uh, they'd be talking to the BIA and Chamber of Commerce, and uh, of course, it's it's voluntary. If the business didn't want to do it, they wouldn't have to. But um, anyway, just an interesting uh, proposal. Um, one other item, I think Council is aware of it, but the new bus shelter 
we discussed it quite length here at, uh, commit at council about the new bus shelter for the art gallery and the library. Um, there's going to be a new shelter and the new location is is just west of the 8th Street Bridge. So just off the 8th Street Bridge, right off the sidewalk before you get to the Cenotaph, before you turn the corner at the library. I uh, just wanted to sort of publicly, I'm not sure if it was mentioned the operation ends or not, but uh, anyway, it is now. Uh, it's out in public. Um, and the only other issue, there was uh, some concerns raised by one of our members about uh, the transit system. Uh, uh, Mr. Becking, uh, I believe, has answered most of them about the audio not being turned up loud enough for uh, having accessible bus shelters, uh, um, snow removal, all of those issues are being, were, uh, committee and staff are aware of and are being addressed. Uh, the only other one was there was um, a request, I guess, made that, uh, that the buses at the bus terminal the, uh, it was inconsistent. Some would kneel and have their ramp extended, some would not. And it was uh, sort of a hit and miss thing. Uh, it was believed that people with sight issues, that inconsistency was a problem. Um, of course, there is the other side of that. If, uh, if you always have, every time you enter the, the request was made that every time that it's at the bus terminal, the ramp be down and the bus be kneeling. Uh, there was a wear and tear issue uh, raised by staff that you know, you're going to constantly putting it up and down and, and kneeling. Um, anyway, it was raised, it was discussed at committee, and the committee's recommendation to council is that the, when the buses are parked at the terminal, that they be kneeling and the ramp extended. There was also the issue, of course, in the winter, uh, I think the doors have to be open when it's kneeling and extended, and uh, in the winter that can be uh, an issue too. Anyway, the committee discussed this at great length, and the recommendation for council is that uh, when they're at the terminal, buses be kneeled in the kneeling position and the ramp extended. Um, anyway, that's all for those minutes. If there's questions or concerns, I would uh, move the adoption of those minutes, Your Worship. Questions? Councillor Gregg? Thanks, everybody. And uh, I would just wonder if Mr. Becking might be able to explain, just for a little more clarity for me, there's an example used of 8th Street East and 7th Avenue East for the TWSIs. So we had, uh, there was spacing um, that we had for the ones that are existing there now, and that's meeting the provincial standard. The recommendation, is that <coughs> continuous with what we have in play, or is this a recommendation you, going up over and above? Patterns? Um, uh, all, well, all of the tactile uh, installations in the city meet uh, AODA standards. Uh, what I'm understanding from uh, the uh, work of the committee is that in their opinion of essentially there are three uh, patterns uh, generally in use throughout the province. Uh, the recommendation is that the tactile pattern with uh, the red color is the preferred one because of the, of the uh, degree of contrast between the tactile plate itself and the surrounding concrete, whereas you don't get the same degree of, of uh, contrast with the yellow. Uh, the, the plain cast iron uh, plates, which have been used in a number of jurisdictions, are not recommended uh, by staff for the very simple reason that uh, constant rusting and whatnot, and in the end, uh, the uh, it discolors the concrete and, and uh, creates a, another maintenance problem uh, for, for the city. So um, that's how how that whole thing works. Yeah, that's good. And so it's, yeah, it was just the surface. The reference was to that's just all I was wondering was was surface or was it size in area and so forth. So thank you. No other questions. Call the question. All in favor of approval of those minutes. Approved. Okay. Number two, uh, minutes of Canada 150 and Sound 160 celebration ad hoc. Councillor O'Leary, you doing those? Yep, thank okay. you, Your, Your Worship. Uh, the committee vision for this event was a year-long celebration in 2017 that would begin with the New Year's Eve Mayor's Levy, a New Year's Eve family celebration with the Festival of Canadiana as a centerpiece 10-day event to mark Canada 150 and Sound 160. Before I talk about the positives, I want to first address the financials of the event. The committee ended up spending uh, about 45000 more than expected. 
There is $7,500 more spent on promotional expenses due to a proofreading mistake. Additional tents added because of the weather. And money spent on trucks pumping out water from Kelso Beach, which was partially flooded from all the rain. That said, there is still fifteen to 20000 spent, which was completely out of the hands, uh, out of the committee's control. At the final ad hoc meeting prior to the event, the events facilitator advised we could be six to eight thousand dollars over budget. He also met with his director every Friday throughout the process and offered no concerns of overspending. It wasn't until the final ad hoc meeting that we were told of the overspending. Although he was vigorously challenged on the final summary, it was also his last day working for the city and we were left to deal with it. From a positive standpoint, we had the world's largest rubber duck in our harbour and for that, it was free. It was estimated that we had an excess of 32,000 new visitors to Home Sound. Reports of restaurants selling out of pop popular menu items, hotel rooms booked to capacity both weekends, shuttle buses full during all daytime runs, record numbers attending our community events, Overall feedback from our downtown merchants was fantastic. The economic impact that was created was enormous. This event will have some everlasting effects on our community as well, with the number of new visitors to our downtown, our harbour front and the entire city. I think we also learned that the city can partner with the DIA, the Community Waterfront Heritage Centre, as well as the Riverfest Extravaganza to make these annual events. The celebration of our Olympians, Larissa Yerkew and Jason Crone, were awesome. And the visit from the Lieutenant Governor to the Billy Bishop Home Museum was tremendous. In the recommendations or lessons learned, there are lots of takeaways from this event. Some good, some not so great, but strict observance to the City's procurement of goods policy would prevent financial surprises after any event. The resolution does include a plan to cover this overage through the use of reserves. In addition, we are currently gapping the event facil facilitator position, which is currently vacant. Our image and marketing dollars had a broad reach, and this event put Owen Sound on the map. People who visited saw Owen Sound as a thriving, vibrant, vibrant community. And with that, Your Worship, I would move approval of those comments. Thank you. Questions? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried. Number three is minutes from the City Hall Accommodation Ad Hoc Committee. That's me again. Thanks, Your Worship. Uh, the committee reviewed the progress reports from August 1st and August 21st, 2017. There was some concern about the contingency costs currently being at 40% and the project at 20% completion. The manager of property advised that the contingency is more likely to be utilized in the early stages of the project with demo and abatement, etc., and these extra costs should be reduced throughout the remainder of the project. These costs will continue to be carefully monitored by staff. Of note, some of you have asked about water re refill stations. There will be three installed at City Hall. Change order number 12, revisions to exterior lighting, a generator connection box, and power to trees and interior lighting in room 206. Manager of property advised that this change came back with a credit of just under $8,000. Some of the existing features were removed and are being lamped with LED and new wiring. Power has been extended out to the existing trees as well as new trees. This change order has yet to be signed. Change directive number five was issued July 31st and was approved by the city manager. This involved nine different RFIs and there was an upset limit of $30,000. Councillor McManaman asked for a complete breakdown of these costs and we'll receive that at a later date. Finally, we had some uh, labour uh, interruptions that were promptly cleared up by staff meeting with Cy, Rio, Cy Rowe. I talked with manager of property Kristen Schreider this afternoon and she said the construction of the site is running smoothly and as far as the schedule goes, the completion date is still March 31st. And with that, your worship, I would approve of those ones. Questions? Seeing none, all in favor? That is carried. Thank you. Down to 11D, minutes of closed meeting for approval. I guess, Councillor Thomas, you're moving those? I sure am, Your Worship. I thought I saw your hand up there. Perfect, thank you. All in favor? That's carried. 
other business. Uh, Councillor Dodd. Thank you, Worship. I just wanted to take a second here uh, and uh, and just speak about a special event that's happening with one of our organizations here in the in uh, the community. Uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters is a, an important organization to myself. It's some one I uh, volunteered with when I was in uh, at school, um, so it means a lot to me. And it does a big uh, plays a big part in communities. So. Uh, Big Brothers and Big Sisters has been an active agency in our city for over 60 years and they're celebrating Big Brothers and Big Sisters uh, month this September. I wanted to take this opportunity to note that on September 18th is National Big Brothers and Big Sisters Day and I also want to acknowledge the huge importance that this agency has on mentoring our youth. Big Brothers Big Sisters has a campaign called Imagine Who Will Become Because of You and is reaching out to our community. If anyone volunteer, if any volunteers or donations would be willing to help support this campaign, it would be greatly appreciated. Big Brothers, Big Sisters is a fantastic organization. I would like to congratulate them on this new campaign and thank the entire organization for the work they do with their leaders in the future. Good. Thank you. Others, uh, Councillor Lemon. Thank you, Your Worship. And uh, there was an article in the paper which caused me some angst in the that uh, the city has gone through an extensive review of every single department, every single area, about how to achieve cost savings. And up until this point, there's no, no signs on lawns or campaigns in the public uh, about what we're doing. And the article in the paper, uh, we've applied for an OPP cost. Uh, we haven't received it. We don't know what it is. And uh, I don't know whether it's more expensive, less expensive, or what it is. But I don't think this should be a political issue. This is an economic issue. The taxpayers of Owen Sound are strained out by the cost of municipal government. And if there is a possible saving, we have to look at it. It would be not prudent of us just to ignore it. So I'm hoping people won't get this as a political decision, where it is a straight economic decision, and the same decision that we've made in other departments of how to save the taxpayers' money. And it's nothing against our own sound police, it's simply what's the most cost-effective way of delivering that service. And there is a meeting this week. Uh, there's been an attempt, I think, to fill it with people, and that's fine. But recognize that all of this, all they're going to hear is the proposal from the OPP, which still has to be investigated to make sure we're measuring apples and apples. And if there's a saving, we'll make a decision. If there isn't, we'll make a different decision. So that's up to council to save the taxpayers money where they can. Thank you. Thank you. Mr. Ritchie, do you want to talk about tomorrow's meeting just so everyone understands? Certainly, Your Worship. Uh, one o'clock tomorrow, uh, we will be receiving our proposal from the OPP costing as, as we've asked for. It will be presented to the working group appointed by council, which, is, which includes the mayor, Council O'Leary, who are both on the free service board, as well as myself and uh, the director of corporate services and the manager of accounting, who are both off at this present time. As well, we'll be joined by Leback Man Management Consulting Company, who specialize in, uh, I'll say, emergency services analysis. Uh, that company will have uh, Mr. Levac himself there, who is a financial uh, analysis, as well as a former retired police chief who certainly knows the police business. Uh, the councillor is right. They were presenting the first information. We have not seen it. We have no idea what it will be. It will be very much a presentation. And quite frankly, Mr. Levac and his associates will take that away, analyze it. They think it will take eight weeks. Um, they will certainly be having input back and forth between the OPP on what their costs are as well as our local police force. So that the comparison will be of the service as well as the cost. Um, certainly all of us here in this room appreciate the work of our police department, uh, but again, doing our due diligence to the ratepayer, we want to make sure that, that uh, the service is equal to that of other, that other Ontarians pay and the value is the same. So that. That is it, Your Worship. We really will have no decisions tomorrow. It will be at least eight weeks before we hear back from the management council. Following that, there will be a full and open process, a report to council, 
and knowing council as I do, I'm sure you will ask for an open public meeting to hear and encourage all input from the public um, on, on where they want us to go. Yes. And to be clear, tomorrow's meeting is not a public meeting, it is an open meeting. We've got cameras set up, so we'll be uh, broadcasting right over to the police station, so the police officers that uh, have some concerns and uh, want to follow up can sit there and they're, um, they've uh, got, got a, a room where they uh, get their directions every day before they go out and work. I forget what they call it, but it's like a conference room. It'll be broadcast right there, so that's where they'll be. And uh, otherwise, you, you know how big the office uh, is over at our temporary facilities where it will be. I can't imagine it lasting very long, frankly, but we'll get the uh, report from the OPP and uh, await uh, Mr. Levac's uh, report. So, good, thanks. Council Greg. I apologize, but can I uh, just bring up a, s a small item that just arose tonight that is outside of the, I didn't, yep, yep, wasn't yep. aware to yep, yep. mention this morning, but Perfect. I just, we, we received an email today uh, on a public meeting uh, for a battery installation location at the top of Ninth Avenue East Hill just south of Owen Sound and it's from Saturn Power and just in a little bit of background I know in 2015 they had a, a big public meeting held in North Bay Nipissing um, and a lot of good information came forward that night and a lot of the residents were were very much informed I just I wasn't on the council of the day when when the issue the earlier this evening was was it had originated but I just wonder if we can ensure that we make sure that we communicate going forward to any surrounding um, residents in own sound that that might affect um, I think communication is always the way to go and I'm not sure I'm not saying anyone was right or wrong earlier but we had a, a gentleman that was very upset about a solar farm and and maybe just going forward, this is another example here. They have a public meeting on Tuesday, September, the, it's the night after our next council meeting, but just so that we can ensure that local residents are all informed of that meeting. Could I go to Mr. Ritchie? If I could, Your Worship, and the council has got me, I did not receive that particular email, but I think to notice to the public, um, we certainly don't want to make promises that we cannot keep. When we promise to give notice outside of what is required, in this case by the Planning Act, which in the earlier meeting tonight we were not required to do, we release the property. Those people have notice requirements that they report to under the Act they're covered in. But if we start making promises to go outside, whether it's the Planning Act, the Bylaw, the Building Act, to give notice, we're leaving ourselves open up to never please people or hit all the people we should. When we have Planning Act notice requirements, Ms. Colt and her staff through the clerk's office make sure we, we meet them, we exceed off the minimum. But uh, I see Ms. Colt has something she'd like to add. I think it may have thrown you off. The councillor spoke about a battery, and I think it may be a tower and um, that, that you're referring to. And um, there is there was a notice sent today, and again, towers like solar panels are sort of odd. They fall outside of the planning act generally. And, um, but we did receive a notice, and I believe the clerk has circulated this notice internally and will bring comments to council to the meeting prior. But there is a meeting on a proposed tower Tuesday, September 26th from 6 to 8 p.m. here at the Harry Lumley Bayshore Community Centre. And the onus is on the applicant in this case to give their own notice and host a public meeting. So um, that, that's what that's about. Okay, good. Thank you very much. Any others? Okay, so I think it's down to uh, my list and it, it's fairly quick. Uh, congratulations to the Grey County Fall Fair that celebrated their 165th Fall Fair this past weekend. That's uh, quite an amazing number. No, I won't ask Councillor Lemon if he was at the first. We, uh, the the Grey County uh, beef producers had a really amazing barbecue on, uh, on opening night, Friday night. They do that every year. It's uh, one heck of a lot of beef and uh, potatoes and fresh vegetables from the area and uh, it's, it's a good meal um, look forward to doing that again next year congratulations to the uh, Sydenham sportsman for a very successful salmon spectacular I believe 30th again uh, neat that they were able to bring back the minister at the time that made the decision that allowed them to uh, 
to start to stock uh, salmon uh, covered off OPP costing. Before our next meeting, on the 23rd, the Saturday, the 23rd of uh, September, um, we're going to be planting trees. Or trees are going to be planted uh, along Kelso. This is a tree day that's sponsored by TD, TD Bank. It is, I believe, the third year that we've had uh, trees that have been uh, donated. I think they're still looking for volunteers, so if you go to TD, treedays.com uh, look for events go down in the events to that uh, 23rd date and look for Kelso uh, I just lost it there we go and click on that I think you can go in there and sign up I think to volunteer yes register uh, for a tree planting event there we go and um, I think they're planting trees that are a little bit bigger. One of our committees, we had a group that came forward that wanted to start to plant more trees in the uh, city and being able to hook up that group with TD that's providing the trees is a great opportunity for our community to move forward. So that is the 23rd of September, Saturday at Kelso. I can't remember the time, but go to tdtreedays.com. Look for events in Kelso. So those are my items. So motion to committee rise. Move that the motion by myself that the committee rise in report. All in favor? That is carried. So we're back in formal session. So resolution adopting proceedings. Thank you, Your Worship. Move by myself, uh, seconded by Councillor Gray that the action taken committee of the whole and concerning public meetings, deputations, public question period, matters arising from correspondence, reports, matters tabled, motions for which notice was previously given and other business be hereby confirmed by this council. No in favor? That is carried. I'm seeing uh, no notice. I'm asking, are there any notices of motion? None. Seeing none from around the table, no new business by resolution. Oh, bylaws. Go ahead. To your worship, the bylaws listed for approval on tonight's agenda include the confirmatory bylaw, a bylaw to amend the appointed officers bylaw to appoint a bylaw enforcement officer and specially appointed bylaw enforcement officers, a bylaw to execute a facility use agreement with BWG Events Group for the 2017 Roof Fest, a bylaw to execute a site plan agreement with 2495421 Ontario Inc. respecting 1010 First Avenue A West. A bylaw to execute an agreement with Region of Huronia Environmental Services for the provision of land for Leachate Haulage for 2017 to 2020. A bylaw to effect the transfer of easement from Graber's property rentals respecting a retaining wall at 795 5th Ave East. And a bylaw to execute a facility use agreement with Steve Brown and Dave McNeil for the 27th Annual On Sound Fall Classic Slow Pitch Tournament. Thank you. Move by myself, uh, seconded by Councillor Gregg. The bylaws number 2017, 144, 145, 146, 147, 148, 149, and, one, and 2017, 150 be hereby passed and enacted. And all in favor? That is carried. That completes our business for you tonight. So we can adjourn, and it is 8.23. Thanks, everybody.